2 to 3 p.m. right here in the Eli Studios. We come to you live, indirect, with impactful topics of discussion that affect our everyday lives. Today, of course, will be no different. We have a special guest in the studio with us that is no stranger to the Empower Hour, Brother M. Hotep. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> the founder of PLM, Pan African Liberation Movement. And you've probably been on this program more than any other guest we've had. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, it's like quarterly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think I can speak for Hanifa and yeah. myself to say that, you know, we, because we believe in your mission. Yeah. We believe in what you're doing. And so, you know, we make it our business to bring you out as much as we can get you so we can help spread the message further. I'm grateful. Yeah. Thank you so much. So this is, should be a really interesting topic. Are we our own worst enemy? Hmm. <laughs> you got any starting questions on me? No, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess uh, my, my starting, well, first of all, can you share with the people who may not be familiar with who you are and what you do a little bit about yeah. that? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> my name is um, Bob M. Hotel, founder of PLM, uh, situated in Baltimore, Maryland. My principal concern is the sovereignty of African people throughout the world. My primary base of operations is Baltimore, Maryland. I believe in the cultural restoration and the political insight and the spiritual awareness of African people. So this is what I've dedicated my life to. This is what I live for. And this is what I'll eventually die for. Mm, beautiful stuff. I'll show Are we our own worst enemy? <laughs> no. We are not our own worst enemy. And I know a lot of people sense that, and they're using what I define as being oppressive logic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oppressive logic is that was logic, meaning that your reasoning starts from the premise that's associated with your enemy. So the reason why many of us say we are our worst enemy is because they are looking at symptoms mm -hmm. that may exist within our communities. You may see some violent occurrences here, you may see a little bit of domestic violence there. You may see some gun violence here, which are symptoms of the overall oppressive structures of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So if you start your reasoning from the symptom, you cannot arrive at an accurate conclusion. So if you want to um, put forth an argument about us, you have to start from the basis of where we are at. Mm -hmm. So we are not our worst enemy. We can never do to ourselves what others have done to us and what others continue to do to us. We don't possess the capacity to do that. We can never subject ourselves to the Ma'afa. It's not in our DNA to do such a thing. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are never, and can never be our own worst enemy. What makes it difficult for, for people to see that within themselves? It's like when, you, when we ask this question, I would say, you know, I would guesstimate half of the population would say, yes, we are. So I hear you say that, you know, we come in from a symptom perspective, but why can't we grasp the concept the way you just described it? That's a, um, one of the reasons why I believe it's hard for us to grasp the concept is because in order, to, in order to free yourself from any type of condition, you have to understand that condition. And if you have been trained to be lazy in your thinking to the degree that you do not want to analyze the condition, you can never come from under that condition. So most of us are not truly analyzing and thinking about our situation here in the USA. We believe that we are neutral. We believe that things are neutral. We believe that we are all Americans. We believe that when no one put a gun in his hand or no one told him to do this, no one told them to sell drugs, this is how we begin to reason. So we can't understand the social and political dynamics that are associated with oppression and how it works. Mm -hmm. So we don't see the we don't see the um, the duress that's placed on you. We don't we don't see that. So when we begin to argue in terms of trying to figure out what's going on with us, we can only argue from what we see in our present environment. And that's not altogether inaccurate because you do see some negative things that are displayed by some of our people, but that is a minority. The, the minority amongst us does not represent the majority of us as a people. Mm -hmm. And this is what we got to come to recognize. Mm -hmm. The quote unquote criminal element that exists within the black community is a minority in comparison to the black community. Mm. I'm glad that you, 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 you 
throw, throw that in there because based on like media and so forth and which is which is it's almost like um we know that majority of black men and black women are married to each other but if you look at the media you would think you and we hear, we we have the conversation and we hear the conversations all the time that you know everyone is married and i'm like no the percentage of black men that are married to black women are, is way higher than the percentage of black men that are married to white women yes. or the other way around. But the media portrays it otherwise. So I'm glad that you touched on that. My question is in the beginning, um, you mentioned we if you if you don't understand the root cause, if you yes. just focus on the symptoms. So if if what's being displayed among us uh, is really just symptoms and it cannot be fixed because we know how that works you you they give you medicine for the symptoms the, the issue is still there where's the hope for us then if the disease is what needs to be addressed versus the symptoms what where's the hope for us should we not do anything we should always um behave in the best interest of our people because the same logic can be asked where was the hope for our ancestors during chattel slavery mm -hmm. they also had to deal with symptoms but understanding that there was a bigger cause, but they never gave up. Mm -hmm. And because they never gave up, you and I sit here today. Mm -hmm. So it's not about you and I. We do what we do for another generation can get that much closer to sovereignty. So we gotta become more selfless rather than trying to think about how we are gonna to benefit today. Okay. We gotta think as our ancestors thought. Mm -hmm. See, they thought about making it a way so we can do some of the things we do today to push our people that much further to the, the end zone. Yeah. Look about, think about it like this, like on a football field. As an analogy, you start off on the football field, the ball comes down, you get the ball. Your objective is to move the ball down the field, into the end zone possibly, but if you can't get into the end zone, get as close as possible to the end zone so your team can come up, kick a field goal. Right. Right? Right. Right. That's, that's our job. Right. Yeah. Our job is to move us as close as possible to silence. That's, that's it. Yeah. Well, what do you say to those black people in America who will hear you and say, I'm good. I got a good government job, my Mercedes in the garage, my children go to private school, we vacation every year. I don't know what you're talking about, but my life, is, my life is fabulous. And nobody's oppressing me. Um, so I don't, I, I'm not, I don't understand all that talk. What, what would you say to those? I would, um, <clears throat> Because I have these conversations with people all the time. The first thing I would try to help them come to understand is that they cannot separate themselves from us. Mm -hmm. That's the first struggle, to help us recognize that we are one and the same. Mm -hmm. Regardless of where we may think we are in terms of our social economic status, we are one and the same. And in the final analysis, whenever this society we live in feel like showing us that we are one and the same, they will. So we got to be very mindful and careful of saying that I'm okay when the rest of us are not okay, mm -hmm. right? So as, as a people, we are always in the same situation that our people are in, regardless of where we may be at mm -hmm. in the situation. Like being on the Titanic. The Titanic is extremely large. The Titanic is going down. You can be on the top deck. I can be on the bottom deck. And you can probably feel like, man, he's on the bottom deck. I don't have a window on the Nothing going on for me, right? right? You on the top deck, you got access to everything. You feel like you're good. Mm -hmm. But at the, in, in the end, the Titanic is going down. Mm -hmm. It's going down. Mm -hmm. right? that. And that's us as the people. So, I, so mm -hmm. your, your $100,000 job, your $250,000 a year job, your Mercedes Benz, your Lamborghini, none of that truly matters if your people are not in a position to define for themselves. I heard Minister Farrakhan quoted this way he said no one person can rise any higher than its people no no one person political insight and political insight or political awareness or political education it translates into group interest mm -hmm. if you understand from a um mama Marimo's Anis perspective as he teaches that so your the reason for politics is to push your group forward mm -hmm. that's the basis of it the reason you come into any form of power it's for your group, it's never for you. So if you aspire to be a mayor, a governor, a president, whatever, the reason for that aspiration has to be for your people, right? And there is never, there's never this thing about, well, um, I'm a black man, 
and I represent all people. That's bull crap mm -hmm. because Donald Trump is showing the world who he represents, what, who he represents <laughs> and what a president is supposed to do, yes. right? So that's bull crap. But see, when we lack the understanding of being politically inclined, mm -hmm. we make decisions that are not in the best interest of us as a people. Is it, speaking of politics, in this, in this American red political system, do you, is, is it beneficial to us to, to climb the ladder in this particular system? It's beneficial. I would say this. Um, in terms of is it beneficial, I would say no. Right? But in terms strategically and tactfully, in terms of trying to wage a war, right, we have to fight the war on all fronts. Mm -hmm. And I believe that all of us have a role to play, and we must play our part where we are best suited. Some of us are best, like me, I can never go into electoral politics. It just don't suit me. Mm -hmm. But, they, but it suits others. Yes. Mm -hmm. And those who go in there has to be people that has our best interests at heart. And it's going to what push us forward as a people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have to still think in terms of how we want to build for ourselves because in the final analysis, we're not here to reform this system. See, see people got the struggle twisted. Mm -hmm. This struggle, this movement, is not about trying to reform where we are at. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to reform this. This thing is sick. It's crippled, yeah. it's broke, yeah. it's parasitic, it's vampirish, it's all these things, right? It's demonic. There is no right reform in this, mm -hmm. right? We have to think in terms of what we have as a people and move to building that up. So we got to start thinking um, in international. We got to start truly thinking about Pan-Africanism and linking up with our brothers and sisters throughout the world and building up Africa. Our intellectual prowess, our financial resources, our social strategies, our organizational development, we have to be willing to lend that to Africa. That's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. That's what this thing is about. Mm -hmm. We gotta be thinking about how are we gonna make us come to understand who we truly are. Because only in truly knowing yourself you come to know who your enemy truly is. And you recognize that you are my enemy. We not enemies. Right. You you not, you can never be my enemy. You can never be my enemy. I can never be your enemy. Even if we disagree, we cannot be right. enemies. Right. Because the definition of an enemy is something or someone seeking your total destruction. Mm. And I never will seek that for either of you. Mm, right. And we gotta be clear about that. So when we stop saying we are our worst enemies, we are not our worst enemies. We can never do to us what others have done to us or what others continue to do, do to us. So we are not the worst. We, right now we just got some issues that we need to work out and work those issues out. We'll behave better as it relates to us as a people. So my, you, you, we talked about the sickness, right? And it's, I'm not being, not focusing on reforming. Yeah. So, which I feel like it becomes a, a distraction. Yeah. Um, it's almost like we're begging mm -hmm. to be accepted. And uh, so are you saying that within this, pretty much the system is doomed that we live in, that's yeah. pretty much what you just said with all the different adjectives that you used. Mm -hmm. um, so are you saying that we need to just focus on us and not what's happening to us? I just wanna be clear. Clear. Well, you can't, I don't think you can separate the two. Okay. I think they're one and the same. Okay, so focusing on us, though, doesn't mean that we're trying to change the system. And if, if it doesn't mean that, then what does that mean? It means that we have, we're trying to um, move into a place of power. Okay. That's what this is about. All races of people understand the politics of power. Mm -hmm. So they, they situate themselves in a position to define for themselves and do for themselves. Okay. They begin to build for themselves. They begin to manufacture those things that, that mean something to them. They seek to control the resources that impact their lives. Like each, like you, Alka, and myself, we all need water. Right. Right? Right. We don't really control the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got a few companies out here that's, many that's doing the alkaline water, things like that. But I'm talking about on a big, massive scale, mm -hmm. right, Re resource-wise. Mm -hmm. So that's what, this, that's what this is about. You know what I'm saying? On a massive scale, owning land and manufacturing machinery and things like that, and going into the earth, getting the natural resources. It takes machinery to do that. Absolutely. And that's the reason why these other people are in our country. So we say, because what? They they understood the, the, necess the necessity of building the machinery and taking the machinery in. We gotta be starting to think like that. Mm -hmm. We keep on saying we want, we want, we want, we want. We gotta think on a larger scale. Right. We need machinery to get into those grounds, mm -hmm. to get those resources and, to, and transform those resources, those minerals into some things that are beneficial to us as a people, right? Mm -hmm. We gotta think beyond a job. Yes. Right? We gotta think beyond a job. 
We got to think beyond the European concept of Korea. Right? We got to get past those terminologies. Have to go. Mm -hmm. We need to think about nation building. That need to be that drives us. Our education got to be an education that, that inclines us to build nations. Um, your higher education got to be about nation building. Your social development got to be about nation building. Your economic structure got to be about nation building. This is how we got to begin to think. Mm -hmm. We got to begin to think how how do we do this thing on a larger scale? How we organize all that we have. So it can benefit all of us. That's what this is about. So in order to do that, do you think that separation is necessary? Separation from ourselves or from the, those people that... Segregation as that, it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to ask, because this sounds really beautiful. Yeah. And I'm just like, but That's can that fine. happen That's in the position that we're in now? Or does, is separation necessary for this to happen? It's going to be... Um, extremely challenging to do it within this land, mm -hmm. no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, but we got to work where we at, and we got to put another generation in a position to make that happen. Okay. Um, because we got to move to that, that to that end. So in terms of organizing, you got to always have a plan. And the plan got to be three, three prongs, you ask me. It has to be um, an initiation, how you're going to call implementation, and what you're trying to, to achieve. Mm -hmm. right? that's, that's what we got to look at, you know what I'm saying? Initiate it. How's it going to be implemented over time, and what are we trying to achieve? And we may just initiate it in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. But if we initiate it the right way by keeping the proper data, data by making sure we got the structures in place, making sure we got the curriculums in place, got all that stuff there, then another generation can come along and they don't have to start all over again. They can pick up and they can move into implementation. Mm -hmm. If they follow the model that we laid down, keeping everything, the, the records and everything good, the structures in place, and then another generation come along and move down to the actual work, succeeding. So we got to become more st structural and more organized. But the thing that harms us when it comes to structural organization is that we live in a land that teaches everybody, you free, do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And so we bought into that. Mm -hmm. So we buck structure. Right. We buck structure and we buck organization. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have the structure and organization that we, that we need to go up against this efficient machine. Because mm -hmm. this machine is efficient mm -hmm. that we're fighting. Mm -hmm. This thing don't breathe, it don't feel, it don't think, it just functions mm -hmm. to one end. The destruction of us. Mm -hmm. And so to go up against something like that is going to require a level of discipline. A level of discipline. Yes, it is. But we buck it too much. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we're dragging this thing on. Well, well, I'm playing devil's advocate here. <laughs> Please. Um, I'm thinking of people who, a lot of us out there, who they have bought into the melting pot. Yes. Hey, I'm, you know, what are you talking about? Multiculturalism. My cousin my, my brother-in-law is a white man and you know what I'm saying so I, I love all people um, why, why can't we move together towards a greater nation let's link arms and we shall overcome <laughs> what, 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 what about those and that's a large percentage of black people in this society so what about what, I mean how does that work the concept that you just described when a large chunk of the pie is not known even is not even that concept is not even a thought for them <clears throat> only people who are unclear about the war that's being waged against them will argue that they love everybody because in the reverse white people in this society reaps the rewards of what their ancestors have heaped upon us, mm -hmm. right? And there's not a single white person that's willing to relinquish or give up his or her power for you. So you can holler that crap all day long that I love all white people, you see what I'm saying? And white people sit there and listen to that, they allow you to say that, right? But ask them to relinquish the power that they, that they have inherited as, as a result of destruction of your people and see what they do. Mm -hmm. So I tell you, they begin to argue and do the, the moonwalk backwards on you. Right? Mm -hmm. Because in this society, as I've learned, you have the perpetrator, way, way back when. Mm -hmm. You have the collaborators. And you have the beneficiaries yes. of our destruction. Mm -hmm. Those beneficiaries are the same as the perpetrators. Because the beneficiaries are the ones now who keep the systems intact that was put in place as a result of the destruction of our people. It's the beneficiaries of the destruction of our ancestors that we contend with today. The beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. And so they can argue all day long when I'm not my ancestor. You are your ancestor mm -hmm. when, you when you receive 
what your ancestors left you and you carried on and what you received still perpetuate the destruction of me and my people, you are your ancestors in that instance. Yeah. That's why a lot of them have a difficult time uh, acknowledging privilege. Yeah. Pri because to, if you acknowledge it, now you have to do something about it. Yeah. You know, which, which may involve <laughs> relinquishing some stuff and they're not ready to go there. Yeah. yeah. And I see it. And it, yeah, because if we are our ancestors, That's right. Then what makes us this anomaly on earth where everybody else are their ancestors too? And the part that boggles my mind as well is when I hear other people say, well, I, that was then, you know, I'm not responsible for what my ancestors did back then. But there's slavery and lynching and discrimination going on right now today. So who's responsible for that? You know, so I don't know, those concepts is just, Confusing to me. I, I, um, my question. Okay, so we talk about the history of, of African people, and we have a glorious history. Yes. And I know, of course, there are things in there that we can learn from. That perhaps our ancestors. I, I mean, the way we talk about it sometimes, it's almost like uh, we were blameless, our ancestors, and that's not true. Just like how today, you know, you, you talk about this as a portion of our community that people make it seem like it's most of us, and it's just a small portion. Um, but the, the thing that I struggle with is uh, there's a lot of history, there's a lot to learn as far as our ancestors, and I'm talking before slavery, yes. right? Um, but then, I, I guess I struggle with, you have the information, you have the knowledge, but I feel there's a disconnect when it comes to the application. Mm -hmm. You know, because I don't really, if I, when I'm looking at my people today and I see the condition we're in, I don't wanna hear about my ancestors who overcame and did this. I really don't want, I, I'm trying to figure out what do we need to do now? So the information that we have, all of that information, and it's a lot, okay? There's still some that's not even uh, discovered. uncovered yet. Mm -hmm. what, what do we need to do to, to bridge that gap between knowing and making it happen, applying what we know? How do we, how do we make, bring those two together so that the same way that our ancestors looked and the things that they did and the, the things that they built, how can we bring that into today, 2019? Now, <clears throat> one of the things I think that's oftentimes overlooked at what allowed our ancestors to, to do the things they did, right? So we, we, we able to read about the things, we see the things, mm -hmm. but a lot of emphasis is not placed on what allowed them to produce, right? So through my knowledge, my research and studying, because I'm a, what I'd like to see myself as being the first urban philosopher. That's what I call myself. No, no one is in my lane. Okay. I got my own little lane. I do what I do. But an urban philosopher is a student of history. So I'm making my business to just study our history consistently. And I look at our way, our culture way. And what I've come to realize through studying it is that our ancestors did not leave anything to chance. Mm -hmm. Nothing was left to chance. So they created systems and processes to ensure that the human being was going to be successful in his or her endeavors in life. Mm -hmm. So they didn't just let you grow up and mm -hmm. at your own whims. Right? They, they had things in place that would pretty much move with you through your evolutionary development. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we had these milestones where we celebrated you every so often as you were developing. Right. Right? Right. Whereas over here, the, the thing is this. We are under the impression that once you are born into the world, you are a human being. Mm -hmm. And you are just going to know how to be a human being. Mm -hmm. So there is no real work put into you mm -hmm. so you can be better than what you come out to be. Mm -hmm. We leave your development to chance. Mm -hmm. We allow the things in the environment to develop you. Mm -hmm. We don't create the systems. Mm -hmm. So then you get 20, 25, or 30, and you get these poorly acting males and these poorly acting women we want to know, well, how do we get them to do this, that, and other, right? That's 30, 25, 27 years of backwards behavior. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. So what I say is this. We have to build systems and processes and put people into these things that's going to help reorientate how they think. Because what you do is a reflection of what you think. Right. Now, if your thought process is misorientated, mm -hmm. then your behavior is going to be misorientated. Right? So we have to be able to put them in a process that's going to help what? Change how they think. But that changing how they think must be reinforced with something. 
because the environment that they are, are, are situated within is going to consistently attack them. Right. The influences yes. are great. Yes. So socialization, we need healthy socialization. So when people are trying to do better, we're trying to move them to this knowledge, we need to put them in an environment where so they can consistently see what it means being African. Mm -hmm. We got to build that. So, so some of the work we got to do out here is we got to connect up our process. We got to connect our systems. We got to connect these events that we're doing and things like that. Mm -hmm. We got to be able to identify amongst us who, who the, the great ones amongst us is doing some work. Because yeah. everybody isn't great at what they do. Right. Like we got a lot of people doing a whole lot, but they haven't mastered their craft right. because they're not putting a lot of energy into their craft. Mm -hmm. So we got to figure out who have mastered crafts and certain artists, and this is where we need to follow our people with you. Mm -hmm. Like this. Mm -hmm. As opposed to leaving them out here on the wing, our people need to be a... When they come into knowledge, it should be a process we move them through. Okay. Certain people they should be introduced to, certain books they should be required to read, yeah. but it should be a, a thing that says, you're saying, this is our way, this is your opinion way, because some of us don't even know. How do we demarcate ourselves? You know what I'm saying? What's ours and what's theirs? A lot of us don't even know no, that. Yeah, that's so we need to have that stuff outlined for us. Mm -hmm. Like, this is our way, this is their way. So people can begin to see it, you know what I'm saying? And then there need to be some consistent affirmations, some things that we just say, and some things that we just don't do. Mm -hmm. right? This got to be systematized. Mm -hmm. And once it's systematized, we got to do this everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, I give you an example, right? Like with PLM, mm -hmm. you can't smoke marijuana, you can't drink alcohol, you can't do those things, mm -hmm. right? For us, we just don't do it. But you got some organizations where they say, man, I got no problem, that we can do it. Mm -hmm. So we got to get on the same page. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing that's confusing us. We're not on the same page. Because yeah. you can go to some black masses groups and you can smoke marijuana, you can drink alcohol, you can do all that stuff, mm -hmm. right? But not with us. With us, it's totally outlawed. We don't do it. You're not smoking no marijuana. You're not drinking no alcohol. You're not popping no pills. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't sanction you being with more than one woman. We're trying to push you to get married. Mm -hmm. These are things we're trying to do. Okay. Right? But if, that, if we're not on the same page across the board, it confuses the person that's just coming into the knowledge. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, good stuff. I, it, what comes to my mind is the organizers need to be organized. Yes. Yeah. And I talk about that in my black book. My black book is called The Politics black of Urban Struggle. Mm -hmm. Politics of Urban Struggle. One thing I say in that book is that I think that everybody need to be in some type of apprenticeship. I don't think you should just pop up and start doing this work. I mm -hmm. think that you should be apprenticed under those who have been doing the work so you can do the work the best way. Because we don't we don't have time to keep make, making unnecessary mistakes. Yeah. Because people just want to just do something. I got an urge to do something, but you've never done this before. Yeah. No, the smart thing to do, this is our ancestral way. Mm -hmm. The smart thing to do is to go find um, a, a, a Pan-African organizer that has a success in doing it, a, a great volume, a great gentleman that has some success, that has a body of work, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that's what you do. You go amongst him or her mm -hmm. and learn at his or her feet. And then it's time for you to go and do your own thing you can because mm -hmm. you can have the proper lessons. That's the same way our ancestors did. That's exactly yeah. what our ancestors yeah. did. Yeah. And we need to get back to that. Yeah. Yeah. Is this all divine intent? condemned us to, us to this mess, I'm going to throw that God out the window. Mm. And I'm, I'm going to go outside that window and stop him. That's fine. You can <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's no way in the world. I'm, I'm with you. There's no way in the world. That's, that's religious jargon. Mm. That's religious jargon mm -hmm. that's trying to um, shift the blame off of the true perpetrators. Mm. And you're taking the responsibility of changing these conditions from the people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? None of the, none of the deities or, or the, the supreme powers that our ancestors believed in or called upon and communed with would ever condemn us to this this crack. Mm. So what do you what do you what do you um, assess it to? I assess it to what it is. It's, it's your it's the European behavior. It's their behavior because if you look at their behavior, it's been consistent. If you go in, if you go in inside any history book and look at any date in history as it relates to Europeans, they have always been in conflict with someone either themselves or someone else. So historically, they have always been in conflict <laughs> since they've been moving around. 
So it was bound for them to come in conflict with us once they realized we was down there living in plush lands. Yeah. It was bound to happen. That's, that's why when I see people doing things like, you know, taking pictures of Jesus or whoever and turning them black, I mean, I don't do that. I don't do that. Because I don't even want black associated with that type of God. I'm so, I'm so um, serious about that. I, I look and I'm like, you're just trying to, you know, replace. It's the same God, but you're trying to replace it with black. And I was like, no, I don't want us affiliated with that. And just like when people talk about appropriating certain things about black culture, it's like we pick the lowest of ourselves to get in the opera about and say somebody's appropriate. And I'd be like, no, 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 don't appropriate it, confiscate it, take it. We don't want it. Mm. You know, because we defend the lowest parts of ourselves. And that's, that's just, yeah. So I'm with you with it. Yes, let's just throw that God out the window. I mean, far, far, far away. Yes. Let's yeah. see. Somewhere I don't know, but um, y'all you know, gonna rile up the truth now with that one. <laughs> he did preface it by saying, "I'm gonna get some people." No, and, and you just mentioned that. Is it? Is it? Are we naive in thinking that we could ever all get on the same page? Because not only did you just mention just within like the like with, with the, with the so-called conscious community where you have different people believe in different things, where they're like, you know, somebody might, might say, you know, marijuana is nothing wrong with it, or drinking a little bit of wine is nothing wrong with it. We can't get ourselves on the same page. And me coming from a church background is no different than the church. So is, is the, are we really being naive? Are we being foolish in thinking that we can get maybe get on the same page is that even possible or should we be looking for little pockets of of people who are doing it to get us such a plf yes um i understand the question and i don't believe nor do i think at this stage that we will have this universal um conformity and uniformity in terms of being all on the same page mm -hmm. i don't think that okay but i do believe um if the work is done the correct way we can all aspire to adhere to the same fundamental principles. That's as simple like like in the streets, right? You got tons of people in the streets that selling dope and robbing and doing whatever that don't hang out together, but they know at the end of the day you don't snitch. That's a basic mm -hmm. principle that they live by. Mm -hmm. That's most of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like we got, it gotta be some basic fundamental principles that govern this arena that we're in. Mm -hmm. Clarity, African centered conscience, whatever. Something has to govern that. Yeah. Because if nothing governs that, it will not be effective at the way that it should be, mm -hmm. right? So it got to be those basic principles and concepts mm -hmm. of conduct. Yeah. So Baba Baruti put a beautiful book out, Ewa, just talking about basic, you know, mm -hmm. character, right. right? Character is overlooked. Yeah. They don't want to deal with character. We got to deal with that. Yeah. From the, I'm, I'm talking about the women and the men. Yeah. We got to deal with that because it's always put out there like the man or the woman is not on, on point. We got, we got some females, African females, and some African males, both, that are not doing what they're supposed to do in terms of good character. Absolutely. And it has to be addressed. Absolutely. We gotta begin to address the area of character because when your character is intact, everything else is intact. Mm -hmm. And so what keep me intact is this right here. I got, a, I got a saying that I says. I says this to myself. I refuse to condemn my children to the ghost of my shame or dishonor. Wow. So my children will never live in the dishonor shame of me. So then I'm going to always do the right thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Here you say in fundamental principles, that that's what every other nation has done. They have basic fundamental principles. And that's what they're doing. They're doing. Right. That's how. That's that's why they are so successful right. too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm at, I asked this question on our last program. I'll ask it here it, because you're a historian. You do a lot of research and study. Is there or has there been ever been two sex, nations, races, whatever, of people to mm -hmm. to live side by side, or no, I'm sorry, live together in harmony and rule one nation together? Have has the Chinese ever ruled with the Russian together? Has the Indian ever ruled with the African together collectively in harmony and where they all shared one single land and was happy together. That's that's an excellent question. As far as my as far as my research um go, I have yet to see that. Mm. I have yet to see that. And based on history, because when you study history the correct way you begin to see that it unfolds logically in a sense. Mm. And you can begin to predict. That's the reason why I like to tell people this why I say history clarifies now and eliminates the future. 
That's the base of history. It clarifies now and it eliminates the future. Because mm -hmm. based on what has occurred, allows you to understand what's taking place now, and you can begin to do what you can predict as to how things may unfold going forward. Right. So based on the logical um, development of history, it's unlikely to ever think or conceive that you're going to have two totally different races linked up some kind of way, ruling together. That's unlikely, because first and foremost, since they are different, they have different needs and different aspirations and different purposes. They have different customs. Right. So you're, you're, the way you govern yourself mm. is dictated by your traditions and your culture. So your, your spiritual beliefs is infused into your governance. Mm -hmm. So how can we be linked up with folk who don't believe spiritually as we do, right, with folk who can't even get to the same spiritual place we can get to? Mm -hmm. That's a total impossibility That's for right. us to be linked up mm -hmm. trying to govern. So we have to go in and dismiss that. We got to start thinking about what are we going to do for us and ourselves and how to get back to our way. I know I know. we, we discussed before coming on the show, we wanted to touch a little bit on the extin extin extinction of the black man, correct? Yes. Okay. As it relates to what we're talking about, um, is there a threat? Is there a threat? Uh, so I will say this. Mm -hmm. I will say this. Um, African people in the United States of America, we live in the, whole, the most hostile place in the world. Okay. There's no there's no other place we can go that is, that is as hostile towards us as the USA is. Mm -hmm. So as long as we are in the world that we are in, we always have a threat to be on guard against. Now the threat doesn't necessarily translate into extinction. Because like I said, we have been already subjected to the harvest yeah. tremendously. Mm -hmm. And we are still here. Yes. Right? We are still here in the projections we on we we pushing almost close to one point something billion people, African people, right? We will not be pushed out of existence in the context of how people talk about it mm -hmm. because they are judging it by, they say Baltimore had 343 murders last year. Well, blacks, blacks killing blacks equals genocide. My question is this, Baltimore had 343 murders. How many did they solve? They solved about 143. So you only solved 143, 200 unsolved, how can you conclude that 343 murders were committed by black people? Right. See, that, that's just how they want us to think. Mm -hmm. See, and that's, we're not putting no thought into anything. Mm -hmm. So just like in Chicago, mm -hmm. you haven't mm -hmm. solved all of them. So how can you conclude that the blacks are doing it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what we don't know is this, because we don't study enough. See, Europeans have always hunted us. Mm -hmm. They have always hunted us. I, I remember when I was chased by the police, I was 15 and 48 the day. Mm -hmm. I was 15. I ran down the alley. Northwest Baltimore, I'm running down the alley, police chasing me on foot down the alley, the police car goes around the street and come around. So as I'm going down, I'm going towards my normal little hideout. There's this big bush that got like a, a centerpiece inside of it. So I'm going to the bush. It just so happened they saw me this time. And so what happened was when the police got there, the one got there, he said, you come on, come on. He had his gun out. And the police cars came around in the car, the first thing they, they jumped out, he said, shoot that nigga. Mm -hmm. Old man came out the porch and said, y'all better not shoot that boy. Mm -hmm. I was 15. So we have always been hunting in this land. So all those murders that's occurring, make no mistake about it, we ain't doing all those murders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I that's the reason why we that. need to know our culture, because your culture teaches you things, right? Your culture allows you to know who your enemies are. Your culture allows you to know who your allies are. Your culture tells you where you should and where you should not go. Your culture tells you where danger is at. When you don't have your culture, you wander into dangers. Mm -hmm. You align yourself with enemies when you don't got your culture. Culture is important. Mm -hmm. And as long as we are living in this land without culture, we will continuously be robbed, raped, murdered, and brutalized right. because we're not clear as to what's taking place. Can, can, can white people be our allies? I and mean, if yes. I'm not even looking for them to be my allies. Okay. That's the conversation we shouldn't be trying to have right okay. now. That's, that's one of those conversations that should never even come across our mind. You know why? Because no other race of people ask themselves, can black people be their allies? Right, right. They're not, just, they're not, thinking, they're not asking that question. Right, right. The reason, no, no one says that but yeah. us. We just want to do that because of how we have been taught to think. Mm -hmm. Right? So the thinking is that we, we have to include the people who have what perpetually harmed us. Agreed. No inclusion. Yeah. We can do it for ourselves. Right. And it's, all, and, and it's okay to say that. We need to know that. You yes. know? It's okay to say that you don't need, you don't want no help. You know? Yeah. You'll tell me you don't want my help. I come along. Right. Let me help you, sis. Let me call your bedroom. I got it. You're, you're yeah. denying me help. Why can't we deny them? Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same with a brother. You know what I'm saying? A brother needs nothing. Nah, I'm good. I know you broke us all outdoors. Mm. 
But it's probably something saying good, he can de deny me. But yeah, we still in an argument about including white people. That's insanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, the reason why I asked it is because I, I, even the conversation, when we talk about ourselves, I it drives me crazy. I'm like, can we discuss black people without mentioning white people, without referring to white people, you know, without measuring ourselves based on white people? It drives me insane, and I think it's possible. I just think that we do it, and it's almost like second nature. You know, so usually when we talk about work moving forward, there's... A, there's always someone that brings that up, allies. You know, we, you can't hear all white people, some of them are allies, and I'm like, what does that really mean, though? You know, like, that's why I asked the question. So I'm glad that you answered the way you answered. Culture, how does one obtain or, or go in the direction of seeking their own culture if they have absolutely no idea? Great question. So, what I've been doing for probably since the last time I was on this show, is I kind of shift and switch from saying culture because I realize that most people do not know what it is. Mm -hmm. So you hear the word culture and it's this big right, thing, right? Yeah. So I shifted to saying our way. Okay. Um, and um, in Keith Swahili is in Gia Year 2, which is our way. Because if you get into our way, you can clearly begin to say this is our way, this is their way. Okay. You see? It's too it's, broad. It's too broad for okay. most of us because how we have been trained in this land. Okay. See, our training have not prepared us to truly understand culture in its essence. So if, if, so when we start talking about culture, we, be, we, we become confused mm -hmm. because we do not know what it is. Right. right. So, but saying our way, which essentially is the same thing, it's easy for me to say this is our case in point. Our way, is, our way will be a communal way rather than an individualistic way. Yes. yes. You can place that yes. side by side, right? Our way will be, let's say, um, a, a, a cooperative economic way rather than a capitalistic way. That's our way. Our way will be a way of seniority over them just saying that you do what you want to do. So we, we, in our way, we are ready to respect those who entered the world before us. Yes. Right? It's important by right? our ancestors. Yeah. Right? So our way will be ancestral reverence. Mm -hmm. Their way will be what? Nothing. Right? Our way will be a macho focal way, meaning that we focus on, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the woman and things moving with the woman in complementarity, whereas their way is not a complementarity way, you know? So that's when you can outline what our way is, is all the way down, you, you, you can get it. Our way is um, ceremonial burial, their way is cremation. Mm -hmm. So although some of us do cremate, yeah. right? But cremation is not our way. Mm -hmm. See, cremation is linked to nomads. See, nomads had no, they had no yeah. place to stay, right? right? So it's constantly moving, so they burn their dead. Mm -hmm. That's not us. Right. That's not our way. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so that's why I said, that's to say our way. Because you can, you can clearly begin to define what that look like all the way down. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. The, what, the, the, the um, discussion around reparations is gaining momentum mm -hmm. right now. Lately, it has. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, um... <laughs> And I'm hearing you say, like, we don't need nobody else's help. We can do this. We can do this on our own. How do you feel about the reparations talk? Should we should we be going in that direction? Should we take um, reparations? Oh. This is what I would say to that regard, right? This is what I believe. I believe that if I'm in the streets and you rob me and you take all my money, mm -hmm. if I get the chance to catch you 10 years later, I'm going to take my money back from you. Hmm. Simple as that. I'm not going to say just because you took it, I don't want it back. You violated me. I do want it back. Mm -hmm. But you're going to take it. Right. I think, but see, even, but see, that's the catch, right? Those of us who push for reparations, they are fighting. They are fighting their way. Gotcha. Yeah. See, like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, they both were fighting. Yeah. Yes. They chose a different tactic, Correct. right? So those that are pushing for reparations for us, that's their tactic. That is a fight. They are going after something that's rightfully ours. Gotcha. Right. I agree with that. I, right. think, I think there is some... There's, there's something that's due. Yeah, they're going yeah. after something that's ours. Yes. Plus, furthermore, right, a revolution and war, you know what I'm saying? You're going to take from the folk that took from you anyway. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. War is not, it's nothing, quote unquote, um, nice and peaceful about war. No. It's nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're not here to respect, you know what I'm saying, the, the rights of the person that's trying to destroy you. You get that person out the way. If that person done something to you, you're going to do something back to that individual. If that person took something from you, you're going to take that back. I shame. Mm -hmm. Eye for eye. Mm -hmm. All that forgiveness yes. crap. That's, that's what this is about. That's a different dispensation. <laughs>
I'm feeling that. Yeah. Oh, the, I'm sorry. Go, go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. Religious wars amongst us. We have all these different facets. Yes, I'm going to go down a list of, you know, you, you're not black, you're more. And, you know, <laughs> or, you know the, wow. the, the Muslims against the Christians, the Hebrews. The Hebrews yeah. I'm just spiritual. I'm none of that. I mean, has that always been the case? No. That has not always been the case. Okay, so this That's, is a new phenomenon since we've been on since we've been in, in, in this Yeah, since we've been in, for us, this is um, something that we have inherited as a result of the Ma'afa in this land. Mm -hmm. So, so, so some are going to say otherwise. But when you look at the, the Africa, and you look at how it's laid laid out, there is what is known as a, there's a traditional Africa. Mm -hmm. But then that traditional Africa has layers to it. Then you get to this Islamic Africa that's layered on top of traditional Africa. Yeah. And then you get to this Christian yeah. Africa that's laying on top of Islamic Africa. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're dealing with. And so since most of us are not really in the business of doing a, a lot of studying, yeah. they may study yeah. a lot in their particular religion, yeah. right? Yeah. You got to transcend out the religion. And you got to really start looking at the indigenous ways of the people and talking to the indigenous people. You will see, you know what I'm saying, that no, we had a way that did not resemble what we are doing today, mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of the stories that people are reading and things we're pushing like in the Bible this is another one I know people are going oh man what are you talking about but the Bible is not a history book first and foremost mm. the Quran is not a history book mm. first and foremost they are both religious books that focus they focus on a specific culture um, of a particular people that's being pushed as being universal now anybody can pick up anybody's book and adapt that and live according to it. So I'm not saying the person can't pick the Quran up and try to live according to what's inside the Quran. Or if you go take on Buddha, Buddhism or, or, or Christianity, right? you can't. But it's since when you read these books, if you read the Bible, you know, so I, I know we argue about the blacks in the Bible and all this stuff, so on and so forth. But if you read the Bible, right, it's specific to um, a particular people, right? They say it's us, some say it's the Hebrews, whatever. But the cultural stuff that's in that Bible, right, does not derive from the land mass that we call we call Africa. Right? It doesn't it doesn't derive from that right there, you know what I'm saying? We're dealing more so with a, a, a area that's a little bit beyond that. And then some are gonna say, well you know African and Asian are the same, they're gonna do all these crazy arguments, right? But we're not dealing with that, you know what I'm saying? When you leave home and you're gone for a very long period of time and your mentality have changed, your complexity have changed, your, your psychology have changed, you are essentially a different people at that point. We're not going to argue that. You no longer have an African psychology. You no longer practice African attire. God. You are essentially a different person at that point. Now, if, if, if someone, someone who is really involved in certain religions, and you mentioned Islam, you mentioned Christianity, um, and they're heavily involved since they were very little, you know, and then now they want to come into our way, do they have to shed that in order to really and fully... Engage that, or can they have? Can those two things exist within the same space? It's going to be um, challenging for them to exist in the same space, and the reason why it's going to be challenging because the deeper you get into understanding our way, some of what you learn in that religion will be contradicted. Right. The deeper you go in, it will be contradicted. Right. Um, right. Like we don't believe you're born in sin. Right. <laughs> we right. don't believe that. That's not that's not African at all. Right. Um, but most people are taught that. Or you know? the Trinity. Yeah. That, that, Where's yeah. the woman? So those are not our beliefs. Mm. That doesn't. So at some point, it, it will be a contradiction there. Um, so it depends on how open that person is okay. to, to truly find our ancestral way. So I'm saying that so people can be clear. That I'm not just talking about anything that's in Africa. Because there's a lot of stuff that's in Africa that belongs there. I'm specifically speaking about our ancestral way. The ways of our ancestors prior to any foreign invasion. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. If somebody wanted to get a good depiction of the our way in a book form, what would you recommend? That's a great question. Why? Hmm. That's a heavy. Book. That's a heavy book, so they would have to be. Probably by it being so thick, the person would have to be ready to really ready to read, right? Um, so what I would say, if they really wanted to get a good a good feel for our way, that's, that's something that's something. 
pretty easy read that they can get through. I would probably tell them to read, um, I would say read the bottom file. Mm. Okay. And the reason I would say the bottom file, because the, the book is broken down into essays, yeah. 22 okay. essays. Yeah. But the essays in and of themselves will stimulate the desire to know. Mm -hmm. And he touches on different aspects of who we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once that desire is stimulated, then you are ready to go pick up other materials. Okay. Right? I agree with that one. What, yeah. what is the number one threat right now to against the, the black man in America? Well, the top three, I would say, <laughs> against the, oh, the wow. black man in America. Ooh. See, I, I, like, I understand the question. Mm -hmm. But this, what I will, this is how I will answer that question. There is no top three. Okay. There's one single overarching threat <laughs> right, okay. that manifests itself in multi, okay. multiple ways. Yes. Right? The threat is racism that has been injected and created by white people. Okay. That is the threat. That is the number one threat to the life of black people in general. Right? That it manifests itself across the board in many ways. Mm -hmm. But if, as long as we come to understand that and, and, and start dealing with that, we can get somewhere. Mm -hmm. We can begin to move to a place of wholeness because the wellness that we seek and the healing that we seek mm -hmm. is a result of wholeness. Mm -hmm. Gotta understand, we gotta become whole. Mm -hmm. When you have been put through the processes that we have been put through, it fragmented us yeah. on multiple levels. And we have learned to function in a fragmented state. Yeah. So now we're trying to do, we're trying to figure out how to put ourselves back together. Mm -hmm. This is what our ancestors understood, and this will make them so prophetic when they gave us the spiritual story of Aset and Asar mm -hmm. and Set. Because Set chopped up Asar up in multiple pieces. Mm -hmm. that's, that's trauma. That's a traumatic experience. But the wife was charged with the task of reassembling, remembering. Right. So for us, it's a remembering process that we have to go through to remember who we once were, mm -hmm. so we can put ourselves back together. And once we begin to put ourselves back together, we can function in a state of wholeness, mm -hmm. which reestablishes wellness. Wow. Thank you. Do you, do, you, do you see us being in a better place today than we were back then? Are we moving in the Are right direction? <laughs> in some instances, yes. In some instances, yes, because we are able to do a little bit more if we recognize where we are at. And in other instances, I would say, no, because it's so much that we don't recognize about where we are at. Um, yeah. our, our ancestors knew where they were, and they knew who and what they were up against. Today, we, we, we kind of wrestle with that because of this um, illusion of inclusion to believe that we have arrived at a place of freedom. Right. And so because of that, it has disorientated us as to what's truly taking place with us as people. Mm -hmm. So it's a yes and a no. But if I had to lean one to the other, I would say we have we have come some we have come some ways. Um, there's more information out today as it relates to our people than any other period of time in our history yeah. in this land, right. and that's a plus. Mm -hmm. We have today we have an abundance of African centered Pan African scholar elder warriors, men and women, that are clearer in terms of what it means to be African than any other point in time. Um, they're clear they're not mixing with nothing. We're not pulling pieces from here. We're not doing that. We're just clear on who we are. And we, we're not playing no games with that. So I, so I say in that regard, I think that um, we have come some ways. We have made some progress. We have produced some people. And we will continue to produce those people. Huh? Do, you, do you consider... I can't even get it out without laughing. Do you consider Barack Obama progress for us in this no. society? No, I do not. And I, and I will not. Um, Barack Obama was an episode within our struggle as a people that caused a lot of distraction. Because a lot of people slowed down in hopes that he was going to do something that he didn't do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm, I'm so he, you know, he, he, he facilitated, down, I, I he facilitated, you know, um, military bases in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He had an, uh, an opportunity to Pardon some of our greatest minds that are behind the wall. He didn't do that. Um, put a uh, bigger bounty on the side of Shakur's head. Yeah, so that's, that's all he really done. He just really served the interest he of He had the Dolphin uh, kill. Yeah, so. he, like I said, he's just an episode within our struggle. And that's what we got to understand in the sense. Just an episode.
on a, on a lighter note, do you, do you feel like, I know you just mentioned like, um, in some ways we haven't progressed, and then in other ways we have progressed. But overall today, at least I do, I see like us, our brothers and our sisters, trying. Yes, I agree with that. I see it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you may not like the, the way that they're doing it, yeah. but you see the effort. Yeah. Yeah. The knowledge that's, that's being pushed out there is yeah. doing something. Yeah. You know, so I feel like in the next 30 years even, it will look completely different. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I definitely am a little bit more uh, optimistic as far as uh, our progress and the direction that we're trying to go. We still have a long yeah. way to go. It's a protracted struggle. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I agree with what you're saying and focusing on not the now, yeah. not you. You know, whatever you do needs to be for generations to come, not the one just after you, you know, or just not your child, just not your nucleus, you know, That's family. Right. Um, but the, 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 I feel like the struggle that black people are in, in this country, and instead of it pushing us to come together as a collective, I feel like it makes us become more selfish and more independent because it becomes about su survival. You know, so the mm. bread that I have, mm. I don't want to share with Alkama mm. because we function from a place of lack and fear. Mm. Yeah, so if, for, for those of us who, even those who are trying and getting the knowledge, what, w working as a collective, like what are some of the first steps that someone could take if they're interested in saying, I want to be a part of a community? Like, like, like PLM, I know you guys are in Baltimore, you know, but let's say someone is around here somewhere and they're like how do i connect with these people what 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 are some of the steps that they would need to take i think um to back up i agree with everything you said and i often say this i believe in the next six years six to seven years we will we, we will be experiencing a time period that will kind of resemble the hall of renaissance yeah in my mind yes because I'm, I'm paying attention to all this literature that's popping out we mm -hmm. we are writing yeah we, we are writing we are putting out these documentaries we're moving into short films and, it, and it's happening, it's, and it's not going to slow down. The arts. Yeah, the arts, yeah. So I'm thinking like in another six or seven years, we're going to see something very similar to it. Okay. Um, we're most definitely moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, I think the best way to get involved with anything is to first ask yourself, why? Because we too often move because of some type of emotional feeling, right? It can't be that, right? We got to be clear that we want to be a part of something for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And coming to it with a clear mind, not expecting it to be this pristine thing that's not going to have its own internal struggles and challenges. Because what we do is this. We get, we get pumped up, we run into an organization, and the moment you see the internal struggles, we run back out mm -hmm. and we talk about the organization. Mm -hmm. right? That's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, We run in like it's all, oh, and then when you see all the challenges that you, that you gotta work through and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then we run away from the organization and we talk about the organization. Yeah. Man, they did this, they did this, they didn't do this, they didn't do this, they didn't do this. So what I'll tell people is this, be real clear about what you're asking for. This is not gonna be easy, it's gonna be challenging, because anytime you bring black people within close proximity, those um, psychological drawbacks that we have from this being in this land, they begin to clash. They begin to clash. <laughs> You see all type of weird stuff, and, and you hear all type of weird stuff that you didn't think exists. You be like, wow, I ain't nothing like that over there. But it's still good people, though. Yeah. We're just trying to work through this jump yeah. together. Yeah. But what we do, we come into it not clear, not think that's going to exist. Seeking perfection. That's right. Yeah. You can't be that. Sounds like some, sounds like our relationships could take that advice as well. That's right. You know why? Because most people go into a relationship yeah. looking for love. Yeah. They very rarely sit down and, and, and self-analyze and tell themselves of the things that they want to bring into the relationship. Pretty much. We go into it looking for something, yeah. and we can't find what we said we're looking for, we flee. Yeah. But you never think of what you can bring to it. So when you want to go into an organization, you ask yourself, what are you going to bring to the organization? Yeah. Because each organization now we're in this land, un under these your pins, need some assistance. Yeah. There's not a single one that cannot do without some type of assistance. Right? We do good work, we do effortless work, we do tireless work, but we still need some assistance. So to be a part of PLM, ask yourself, what can I contribute and offer to that organization? That's that's an interview question. That's, that's it. jobs. That's it. You ask yourself <laughs> that question. Look at yeah. the What do you bring? That's that's it. It. What do you bring in? If yeah. you're a good spokesperson, then bring that, man. Yeah. I love talking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you're a good person, if all you want to do is go crack a head, then come tell me that. Yeah. So listen, man, listen. I love what y'all are doing. I'm 100% committed. I don't have patience to work through the stuff we got going on, but I, I, I'll crack a head. 
Right there. there might be a place it's for a you, place brother. For Come you on in. So wherever it is, like, be up front and be clear about it. Yeah. That's, that's all I ask. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about the arts, and I know we all have to wrap it up, mm -hmm. but I just want to mention, because um, when I hear you talk and you say that we, um, you know, we're moving in the, the direction as far as the Renaissance, yeah. and I just saw the movie, Jason Peele's new movie, Us. Us. Yes. Yeah, uh, and I thought mm -hmm. about, yeah. <laughs> but you know, as I'm watching this movie, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, we're just so different in every way. You know, it's not your typical Hollywood style horror film. No, it wasn't. You know? And I don't think we, as a people, have the capacity to even do horror films like they do. <laughs> because we, we're not, that's not us. Stuff is even when we do horror, we, we make it funny. Yeah. Like, uh, what's the Wayans Brothers did mm -hmm. that one? Scream. With, yeah, Scream or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, I say that, I say all that to say, I see it because I see us moving in these directions of, you know, taking film and, and block, you know, yes. busting down barriers and walls, but doing it our way. That's right. You know, and doing it a different way. That's right. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you put it too, for them. Right, right. That's definitely key. Mm -hmm. Our own spaces, yeah. no doubt. Because Hollywood, whoo, that's a cesspool. Um, <laughs> did you want, I know we're wrapping up. Um, what is the uh, some some parting words that you can give to the people in specific who are new to this type of information? You know, what what would you say to them? Best thing I can tell any of us is that um, discipline yourself to be about the business of studying your way, your history, your culture. Take your time. Don't try to rush your process. Embrace your process, but be committed. Be honest. Don't lie. Mm -hmm. Let your word be your bond. Let your bond be your word. Because every time we lie to one another, every time we let one another down, every time we don't come through for each other, we set ourselves back because we are dealing with people that are hurt. So we need, we need for us to always show up. If we say we're going to do it, yeah. then you must do it. I think we got to focus more on character building mm -hmm. and self-discipline. So those are my areas. Character building and self-discipline. And I tell people always, strive every day to outdo the person you were the day before. Just go up against yourself. Don't challenge me. Don't challenge the next person. Don't compare yourself with the next person. Challenge and compare yourself against yourself. Good stuff. You have four books currently. Yes, four books. Currently working on two more. Oh, wow. <laughs> Where can they get your books? Ah, uh, great question. You can purchase my books. You can reach me straight through Facebook at Mhotep Batu, or you can go to thefirsturbanphilosopher.com, and you can purchase my books there. Is that the number one or the? Yeah, first with the number one, the yeah, one st. Um, Urban philosopher. Urbanphilosopher.com. Okay. And the books are also on Amazon. Okay. So you can, you can purchase them there. Um, the first book I written was Urban Philosophy: Thought and Behavior System. Then the second one is Urban Philosophy, Politics of Urban Struggle. The third one is the, our Urban Philosophy, New African Revolutionary Vanguard. And the, the fourth one is African Manhood in the 21st Century. I've read your first three books, and what I admire is that how you, you link them all together. It's like a stepping stone yes. process. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Now, are you, you guys are still doing the study class? Like yes, we do the study class every Sunday um, from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. That's the first class. And we have a second class that starts at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. I'm the facilitator of the second class. There's another student that facilitates the first class. Both classes are great. And the reason we have two different classes is because most of the people that attend the second class, they have been a part of the study class a little longer. And we have pretty much um, already went through the study course materials in the first class. Okay. So where can they um, get information about how to, if they wanted to join your class? If you're interested in being a part of the study class, inbox me on Facebook. Okay. Inbox me directly on Facebook, and I will provide you with that information. And that's in Baltimore, Maryland, yeah. family. Uh, you guys ever looking to do any, um, like, so, I mean, um, web classes or courses? We, we, we have discussed it, but the thing with our study class, it tends to get very personal at times. Okay. And some people, um, they wrestle with being a little bit open 
if it's being open to the whole, to the world, I guess. We haven't, we haven't, we haven't figured out how to do it and still, because I like the authenticity and I like for the people to be personal because growth and development takes place then, but I do understand the need to also be able to make it, you know, Watch for those. People yeah. in Wyoming. Yes. <laughs> Those two people in Wyoming. Yes. Who really want to join the mm-hmm. <laughs> We everywhere. We are. We are. Mm-hmm. Family, this has been your Empower Hour. Hanifa and I do this each and every Wednesday, like clockwork, um, here in the eLife Studios. You can follow us on Facebook under Empower Hour Talk Show. And we do um, share a lot of different current event news stories and things on that um on that page as well so follow us there and you can find all the um past episodes on youtube under miss free the people that's the youtube page we'd love for you to um subscribe to us there we're looking to get our numbers up on youtube and that's miss free the people thank you so much we always ask that if there was anything impactful anything you've learned from this um conversation today Please share. We just ask that you share this link with others so we can all um, learn together. All right, family, until next week, take care of each other. Peace. Peace.